welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Simon. I've been investing in property for over 20 years. And if you're an active landlord or planning your next property investment, this podcast provides interesting and useful conversations to help your property journey. If you're willing and able to leave a rating or review in your podcast player of choice, I would really appreciate it. And I would just like to say thank you for some, some great messages and feedback that I've had since the last episode from Simon, Jim and Lena. It, it really is brilliant to hear from you. Thank you very much for, for getting in touch. Now, today I'm joined by Annette Gardner and she has a, a very property related background and career. She has worked in the state agency and she has also renovated and rented property as well. But currently, she is working to, to maximize the presentation of property and to really get the most out of it when you're wanting to present it to anyone else, really, be that for, for sale or possibly for rent, but, but primarily for sale. And today, I hope she is going to instill some, some practical tips and some wisdom for, for us all to, to benefit from in our own property presentations. So first of all, Annette, thank you very much for, for joining me today. And what, or should I say, why would someone want to try and put in extra effort to present a property well? Oh, well, hello. Thank you for having me. Um, well, basically, it means that, uh, you, you know, you, everyone knows what it's like to go into an empty property. There's no soul in it. There's no feeling in it. It's, it can echo. It's, it's quite horrid. Um, so if you if you present it so it looks like a home, people are going to want to to buy it. So you you end up, especially with the photographs, that's the first thing people are going to see. They'll see photographs that will draw them in and and say I want a viewing. So traditionally, agents are getting many more viewings once a property is presented with furniture in it um, or even if it's got furniture in it just to present it uncluttered I mean the worst thing that they have is clutter um, so I can go in and help with the decluttering I can help with the furniture um, and it, they get more viewings and then they get more offers uh, it sells yeah. more quickly um, this is just on the experience of the prop you know the the properties that I've worked with it certainly seems to make a huge difference I mean, I yeah. could quote figures from America, but I, I prefer to have my own figures, really, because <laughs> in America, it's huge. You know, mm. it's it's homes. You wouldn't sell a property without staging it. Um, oh, wow. But here, the estate agents are a little bit slower. But um, I find that the independent agents are the ones that are very open to it. And uh, it's, it's made a big difference. Yeah. I mean, I, I think just from my personal point of view, I, I think nobody should should try and present their properties the best because no. because then I, I know that I can can go in and try and try and knock the buyer down on price because because clearly they don't care about the property and uh, and it's a bit bit run down and and it'll need work afterwards so so as an investor you you want to to find the properties that are not well presented That's but then exactly. once you've once you've got that property and you're wanting to present it to others you you really want to to try and then present it as as best you possibly can yeah, definitely adds value without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. So if if I'm wanting to, to just sort of make a start in this area and, and sort of do something my, myself, what, what sort of things could I do? Either if I'm looking to, to put a property on the market, either to rent or to, to sell, if if this is currently a, a an empty property, what, what what could I do to, to get started just, just on my own, potentially? Well, you could buy furniture to put in it, um, but that would probably be quite expensive. Or you could, I mean, the main thing is to keep everything neutral. Uh, don't have coloured walls. Um, as much as one person might love a coloured wall, another person hates a coloured wall. So we always say keep everything neutral. And then what I would do is um, I'd colour in it because colour is important. But I would add that with, with, the soft, with the soft furnishings and the artwork um, and add little things. So in the kitchen, I'll add things like a toaster and a, and a, and a kettle, usually a wine rack <laughs> with a couple of <laughs> bottles of wine in it, um, fruit. I've got plastic fruit, which sounds awful, but actually it looks very realistic. But just don't try and eat it because you'll crack your teeth. Um, and yeah, just, you know, you can keep it quite simple yourself, really. Um, 
but I use upcycled furniture, which is my sort of unique selling point, if you like, which means that if I rent it to somebody, it's a lot cheaper than traditional home stages who will buy lots of new expensive furniture and then it's a lot more expensive to rent you can you can actually rent if you wanted to do it yourself you can there are companies that rent the furniture but personally i found it makes it look rather like a hotel <laughs> um, and i think people want to buy something that they feel they could live in and and want to live in you know that's why developers you know big developers will have show homes yeah and um, obviously this is something you'd want to do before photos are taken for, for online marketing and things. Definitely. But, but w would you would you recommend doing it just for the photos or, or do you think it should um, stay longer? You can do, but personally I wouldn't because, you know, uh, people are going to see this lovely home and want to come and look at it and then be very disappointed when it's just an empty shell. So um, it might get the viewings there, but you're not going to get the offers, I wouldn't say. So for the sake of you know, a small amount compared with what you will gain in extra um, cash for the property, it's worth it in my view. But obviously, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think just on a, on a subconscious level, we, we all, we, we are all biased, aren't we? Because you, you do just instinctively when you see the photos and when you go in and, and look at a home as well. I know some it, people are do, it does go, feel do, different. Yeah, some people do virtual staging, which again, I kind of see why they would do that. So they can actually have photos that make it look like a home. But again, when people come, they're going to be disappointed. I suppose it gives people an idea of what they could do. But not everybody, very, in fact, it's the minority of people can actually visualise what they could, how they could make it and how they could make the house. I mean, there's certain things like I'm doing one at the moment and um, it's got a 1970s kitchen. I mean, there's very little I can do apart from tidy it and clean it and make it look nice. So we're actually going to get, interestingly enough, a kitchen designer that I know. Um, he did another property further up the road. So we're going to get some images of that kitchen, which is actually the same, and put that in in the property so that when viewers come round, they can see what it could look like because so you have to adapt and bathrooms is another thing you know avocado sweets from the 70s and stuff um, <laughs> yes, yes. Which, one of the properties i bought a while ago had one of those yeah yeah well this this is because I, some of the ones i've been working with quite a few have been working with have been people whose parents have passed away and they've got um they want to sell it they're prepared to do painting and few things but you know a bath what's the point of putting a new bathroom in someone else would want to do that and a new kitchen so it's very you have to be in my job quite flexible and be creative as well to to make the most out of it for the client and then obviously working with the agent yeah yeah it one of the the situations that uh, a property investor i think would often find themselves in is is not dealing with an empty house but you're dealing with a lived in house yes. generally speaking with a tenant in there yes and and you might then be wanting to take photos and maybe show people around either for a, a new rental if that tenant's leaving um or quite a lot these days it's often to to put it on the, the yes. house on the market to sell and i, I think it, it's very difficult when you've got somebody else living in the property and it's, it's their home sure are, are there any and is there, is there anything that you can sort of do or, or a, a landlord could do or perhaps a professional such as yourself could do in that situation to try and try and help get the best out of presenting a property? Well, the number one thing is keep the clutter at bay. Um, that's always the worst thing. Um, and try to I have done this on several occasions. There was one where there are two gentlemen living in the flat um, and we went to the, they were very amenable. It depends on the tenant. Um, mm. These two guys, I think the te the landlord had, had done them quite a few favours and was helping them, so they were very accepting. Um, and so what they would do is they would take certain things out when the viewings were on, and then I had soft furnishings, bed covers and stuff, which the I had in a bag, and the agent would put them on just before the viewings. So again, it's working with the agent, um, which I think is very important. So um, and also I have. Um, done one which was um it had multiple tenants in it students well no they were young actually they weren't students they were young people um young workers and then they all 
uh, they wanted to sell the property, but they were still in it. So we managed to move things around a bit. I, I actually staged their, some of their furniture just before they were moving out so the photos could be taken. And then once they moved out, I did the whole staging again. Um, so it's it's... But I, I would say if you've got tenants, you know, try to see how amenable they'll be. Um, it depends whether they want to leave or not. That's another issue. Um, and yeah, see if you yeah. can, you know, make sure that they can keep it clutter free. Um, and, yeah, I mean, this this one flat where the two guys were was mostly grey. So, again, I put covers over things and lightened it up and put bright cushions and and also make sure you have lights on. So people want light, you know, and spa- they want to see space. So mm-hmm. um, it, it all depends on the ten- tenant, really. But um, I mean, some, that's why sometimes it's good to have somebody like me in because I'm the third party and I can sort of negotiate a bit, bit more, bit more sort of, um, yeah, Ni- not nicely, but it 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 stop it. They, they then can be cross with me rather than the landlord. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite. So, I I think from a uh, from a, a sort of landlord point of view, if you're trying to do this sort of thing yourself, I think it, it probably would be quite difficult. I think I mean, it would. You, you could you could ask your tenants nicely, um, but I don't think you you would really feel you could ever suggest going in and rearranging their things or I know or well but, but you know I have the same thing with ordinary you know ordinary people who are selling their homes I've, I did one last week and um she was good she was quite amenable but there are other people that don't like it they don't understand that it's it's not about their taste it's not saying their taste is rubbish as I say to them you would never live in a home staged home it's too perfect but if you want to sell the property and you really do want to sell it you have to put your your own feelings aside you have to let the property go to some degree um, because that's that's what you're there for you're there you know you want it to sell you you want to move on so you have to cut your own feelings out of it really and see and I see it objectively I'm seeing it from the buyer's point of view um, and everybody has different opinions and tastes so if you keep it pretty neutral you're going to appeal to the most po- most possible people so so if, if you have a a, a perfect client who, who gives you free reign um, what 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 do you as a, a as a professional sort of do to start with what what do you do what what would you like to do to a property to get the best out of it then? Well, if I mean, yeah, the, the ideal one is an empty property where I've got the key and I can go in and do do my own thing without anybody else coming in and <laughs> interfering, so to speak. Um, well, I would, I would, as I said, always suggest that it was neutral background, whether it's white or whether it's cream, um, but just keep it everything as neutral as possible because the colour and the interest can be added, as I said, with plants is another great thing to put in properties. Um, artwork, um, I put sort of books sometimes, cookery books in the kitchen, all little tiny things that people, as they walk through their eye, will will take it in and it will create a, a feeling and an image of something that makes them think, oh, makes them, gives them a good vibe, put it like that. Um mm. So yeah, I would I would then uh, choose. So I basically decide what furniture I'm going to put in. I try to keep it quite simple. So um, I do. I usually have a, a sofa bed that is, looks quite smart. Then I, a TV usually in the sitting room and different bits of furniture. It depends on on the property. But and what's interesting is that um, the furniture makes the, the rooms look bigger than when they're empty. Um, I actually mm. had that as a quote from a lady I did a flat in Hampton a couple of weeks ago and she went to see it and she said, I can't believe how much bigger it looks with the furniture in it, which is bizarre. But, you know, and it just it's just, well, you know what it's like going into an empty property. I'm sure everyone can relate to that. Um, yeah, just... it, it, it's strange because you, I think when you, when you see property that sort of has no flooring, for example, Yes, I think that's sort of the, the worst. And then, then you add in the flooring, and it, it looks looks a bit better and a bit bigger. And then, as you say, you add in the furnishing, and suddenly you realise how much you can fit in the I room. And it, it does. Well, the does one help. in Hampton was literally just bare walls, and the front that only had one. You came off the street into one room, and there was one bedroom, a small kitchen. It did have a garden and a, and a bathroom, but the main room obviously had to cater for quite a lot of things. Um, but it was a bit soulless. So um, I had a big 
rug that I put down. I even bought in a farce around to put on to put on it. So it had a focal point. I managed to get a small table and chairs in one corner, a TV in another, and the settee. And so people look and think, oh, I could eat here. You know, I could sit here and read my book. I can watch TV. So it's all about a lifestyle. You know, creating a lifestyle in a property that people want. Do you do you have a sort of a, a checklist that you you go through when you come into a new property, or or do you um, just feel for a property i just well i suppose i do i just i just things just come into my head you know i just think oh i I see something and and obviously it depends on the property you know i did a property that was um 2.3 million up in richmond so i use some um antique antique style beds in that because it was appropriate um in fact the one in hampton was an older property so i actually used one of the beds in that but if it was a modern property i'd do different things so it's very i i create the designs very much very bespoke to the property and sometimes to the people um especially people whose parents have passed away um i like to have a little sort of homage to them somehow because you know the person's going through grief so I like to say to them, so one, for example, there was a house in Henfield and he was very keen on the sea. So I bought some some pictures in that were sea, sea pictures and uh, and they, they, they quite like that because it makes their journey easier then to let it go because it's hard to let go of your less, you've let go of your parents and now you've got to let go of the house, you know. So, so I... I want to know where you get all this from. It sounds like you've you've got a sofa bed on hand, you've got artwork on hand, you've got antique furniture on hand, you've got got sea pictures on hand. I have. Where, where does all this come from? Well, um, I use, as I said, upcycle furniture. Um, I did this because um, I think it's more interesting. I'm very into sort of um, the environment, and there's so much wasted, thrown away into skips and and. You know, amenity tips every every week um so i basically get a lot of my stuff from um charity shops and um, there's a big charity warehouse down in in worthing that i go to uh which is amazing um and i buy also so that's giving money back to charity so to me it's a win-win um often it needs repainting so i'll repaint it up um i might put new knobs onto things but i just can see the you know the possibilities and i've always loved doing that so for, to me it's 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 being able to do all the things that i love as a job which is amazing um and i also buy from facebook marketplace which again is helping people who are trying to i mean a lot of people nowadays are having to sell things to try and survive because it's quite a hard time so um yeah, it's just, and yes, I'm always buying things. Always, I've got hundreds of hundreds of cushions. Um, and I've got a big warehouse unit down in um, Sussex where I live. And uh, it's all in there. So it's, it's great. I've got all the stuff stored at the back. And then I've got an area at the front that I can bring things forward when I've got a job and then put it straight in the van and off. So it's all quite well organized. Mm-hmm. And if I haven't got something, I can just get it and I can get it quite quickly. I don't have to order anything or and I don't have to worry if things are damaged in any way. Um, I don't have to worry too much because I can either repaint it or repair it or, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I think could, could you tell us a story of your of your favorite um, house staging that you've you've done? So I, I bet I bet the I mean, you, you talked already about sort of multi-million pound properties that you're staging so there, there must have been some very impressive properties that you've you've presented so well, so yeah. well funnily enough I think that the jobs I love the most are actually not always the most expensive um, they're the ones where so like I mentioned about the bereavement there was a gentleman in Horsham and he was an only child he lived up in um, Norfolk and he had to get the train down because he didn't drive and he was just overwhelmed his his mother had died in the june and he had to put the property on the market he was obviously still grieving about it and um there was it was all old people's furniture you know those horrible sort of flower pattern settees and things and um so he asked me if i would go and help him declutter which i did and um we moved quite a few things into the garage and then i helped him go i got charity shops to come and collect various items i took some of the charity items myself for him because i've got a lot very large car um and then we staged it and uh it was amazing and it sold in a week 
Um, she had about three offers, I think, the first Saturday, and he was absolutely thrilled. Um, and it was helping to support him through that difficult time um, because he was not wanting to let go. And it's you have to be quite gentle, but equally you have to be, you know, we, we're there to do a job and we're there to move on. So I don't think for me it's necessarily the value of the property that's the key. It's the helping people move on and everybody wins you know the agent did well the property actually sold for it had been valued at probate for seventy thousand pounds less than it sold for so it was a big difference um i okay there was a few months space in time but even so that's quite a big difference um, yeah yeah quite <laughs> and we and so in fact the last three or four properties i've done with that agent have sold within a week so I'm not saying it's all down to me. I mean, it's it's lots of things. It's part of the marketing. I would say staging is part of the marketing. Um, there's also obviously the price of the property has to be right. The agent has to be right. The house itself. I mean, one I did which had stairs, uh, ten steps up to the house. You're immediately limiting it because you can't have people with prams. You can't have old people. So things like that have to be right. But generally. Uh, with run of the mill type house, it's it's pretty pretty good. You you mentioned um, in that that example you gave about decluttering. I, I think that's that's often a very difficult process for people. How, what, what do you do to sort of encourage and and help people through that? Yes, it is difficult. Um, I mean, I did one last week um, and they're living in the house. You know, they've got two children. So children's bedrooms, you know what they're like. Um, and, yes. But they, she was very good. She basically had two big crates and she was happy to put everything into the crate to take the photos and then store that in the garage and then, you know, put it back and maybe keep it a bit more simple for viewings and things. But the number one thing was to get those good photographs that would draw people in so um it's just it's again everybody's different and i you know i have to say to them look because i think people can get a bit she said to me actually um oh i felt a bit intimidated that you were coming in and you'd see all the mess that we live in and so i told her that actually i'm a hoarder myself <laughs> my house is a total tip like a builder you know and um and, she and, said and i wish that wasn't enough she was a warehouse <laughs> yeah she said i wish you'd said that at the beginning because i wouldn't feel so bad but i said well, well maybe i need to be like that to understand how it is for you so that that's so i approach it in a in a more understanding way and i am quite a patient person so you know and obviously ultimately it's their home as well so even though they leave, they want to leave, they're still living there at the moment. So there might be little things I'll let go of. I don't think are quite right, but I won't, you know, I would never get in an argument with anybody about it. So yes, it's, each one's different. You just, I just have to use my instinct really. Mm -hmm. How much time do you think people should set aside, either working on their own or working with you to sort of accomplish well, the house process. I did last week was, um, it had three bedrooms. Um, it was a sort of barn conversion. And uh, it had a sitting room and a dining area and another small sitting area and then a conservatory. And we did that and tidied it completely in five hours. So I can go in on an hourly rate. Um, I can go in on a daily rate. Um, or I can do the whole thing. So, um, and then, so I will charge for... Um, if I'm doing all the furniture, I will charge a set, the setup fee, the design and the sourcing and everything, and then a monthly charge for the furniture. And, you know, I would say most of the properties I've done have sold within three months. Uh, I would always suggest keeping it until exchange. Um, I had one chap who uh, decided he got a buyer. He didn't want to carry on paying the thing. And the day I took the furniture out, the day after it, they, it fell through which wasn't very nice for him. But no. um, but that's, you know, each person's choice, really. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it works really well. So so you, you mentioned sort of different rates and things. Uh, just yeah. working with a, a, an example, what, what sort of costs would people or should people expect sure. for, for staging a property? And, and how is it? How does it tend to be structured most of the time? Well, I work it out on the time I spend, basically, on it. Um, so I think the gentleman I was talking about earlier, um, it was about two and a half thousand 
to do the setup and the takedown. I am I don't charge the takedown until after it's taken down. Um, <laughs> obviously, I've got um, charges for a van and a man and a van. Um, and then it's that one was about three hundred pounds a month f- for the furniture. Mm-hmm. So it's it's according to the guy that I work with, who is the investor. Um, he said he'd been quoted much higher fees by um, another stager. So I think, and as I said, because I've got upcycle furniture, I don't have to charge huge amounts for the rental. It's a lot less than it would have otherwise be. But that was for a say, so that was a three bedroomed house. Obviously, if it was smaller, it might be a bit less. It just depends how much furniture I put in. And, you know, I'm, with him, I was using some of his own furniture as well, because it was actually suitable to use. But I will... So the one I'm doing in a couple of weeks, I went. we went round, we've been through all the furniture, and we said to them, we can keep this, we can keep that, but please can you, you know, remove that? Because especially in old people's houses, there's bits everywhere. You know? Yeah, so if, if people are spending sort of a couple of thousand-ish um, on, on this kind of thing, I, I think uh, as investors, we always look for a, a return on the money sure. that we spend. So how how do you sort of see that being being realized in, in well the it's difficult to know it's difficult to tell um i mean as i said to you the other property that sold for seventy thousand more a lot of them have been sold for the asking price but you know what i say to people is the other option if it's not selling is to reduce the price now an agent is going to reduce that price by i uh, maybe ten thousand so two thousand is a lot less and it's worth spending two thousand to try and get the property sold quicker than than go down ten thousand pounds on a reduction because that's what agents quite like to do sometimes just to get to sell it. Um, yeah, but again, I, I would definitely um, promote the more independent agents. Um, that, in yeah. my experience, <laughs> yeah, quite. And I mean, in, in this area in the southeast where where we both are, quite often I see properties being reduced not just by ten thousand mm. but by. 20,000, 5,000, 50,000 sometimes. So, so I mean, it's, it, there, there can be some big price reductions out there at the moment. Sure. So if the alternative is spending two, three, four thousand on, on really presenting the property in the best, best possible light and sure. encouraging people to, to put in asking price offers or even maybe not quite asking price offers, but fast offers. So, yeah, so even if they get, get the asking moving. price, yeah, still worth it. But, you know, it is mm. important. I mean, I don't, you know, you all know this, but to buy the property in the right area, because however smart I can make it look, if the, I mean, at the one I did and the, it was not a brilliant area and either side were terrible houses. So you'd have this beautiful house inside and you'd look out in the garden and there was a load of, stuff I won't swear a load of stuff (laughs) in the garden and you know that's not going to help but um, I can only do what I do Um, and I obviously can I do gardens as well so I will supply all the garden furniture um, and um, I put things like um, um, barbecue not a big one a small barbecue um, more comfortable chairs and try to make something of the garden um, because that's another especially like the one in Hampton and I did one in London to have a garden is a really plus point, but just having a square of nothing is, is not attractive. So, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I I dress the gardens as well. So I think we're we're nearly finished for for our our chat today, but I just wonder if, if maybe there's a a, a story you could tell about your, your biggest transformation. Is is there anything that, that comes to mind as in something that, that went from, real ugly duckling to to amazing by by the time you'd finished with it and well yes i mean i think probably uh maybe the one that i'm doing at the moment will become like that but otherwise i would say the one i keep talking about but the one that was in horsham um because it really i've you know if you have a look on my website it's the before and after pictures is just completely completely transformed it and um and I did feel that that just made such a huge difference. Um, and yeah, that was probably my favorite. Cool. Well, I will make sure that, that uh, there is a link to your, your website in the show notes for people to go Thank and have you. a look at, at that transformation and that property. And if anyone wants to, to get in touch with you, 
uh, what's the best way for them to do so? Well, probably look on my website, which is um, www.hepburnathome.co.uk, named after Audrey, who I love. I'm not called Hepburn, but that's that was my sort of style icon, if you like. Um, so I try to style things that look as good as she did. <laughs> <laughs> cool, fantastic. So, so yeah, again, that if people can't remember that link, will be in the show notes. Thank you. So they can go there. And uh, it just remains for me to say thank you very much, Annette, for, for joining me today and, and talking us through the, the, the processes that you take and, and how people can, can approach trying to get the, the best out of their property when, they're, when they are trying to market it. Well, thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. And to everyone listening, um, please do get in touch with Annette if you're, you're curious about how to maximise the, the, the potential of presenting your property. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week.